Yeah, hi all. Uh, my name is Dave Pollard. I am the Education Outreach Manager at Spaceport Cornwall. Um, so this role as an Education Outreach Manager is sort of multifaceted. One is to speak directly with students right from primary school level up to post university to try and engage them in, in STEM um, skills using space as a bit of a hook. Um, another is to work with the colleges and universities to make sure that there are courses that are starting to be provided so that students like yourselves um, have got a clear sort of pathway into the sector if that's what you decide that you want to go on to do. And thirdly, it's about working with businesses to speak to them about the skills that we have down here and how we're ready for more businesses to set up down in Cornwall um, to, to really develop the cluster further. Um, so, yeah, my, my background isn't in space. Um, my background is all um, in engaging young people and trying to help them aspire to, to be uh, the best that they can be. Um, so previously I worked with organisations speaking to students about, um, about university um, and in my most recent role before Spaceport, I worked with multiple businesses um, in trying to engage school students in, in things like careers fairs and school talks. Um, and it was through that that I, I got to hear about Spaceport Cornwall. I'm a Cornish lad um, um, and I heard about Spaceport and I was so excited to hear about the, the possibilities that it can bring to the county um, that I got in touch with them and I said if there's, if there's ever an opportunity to, to work with you full time I'd be really keen to uh, and luckily enough they had something that came up. Um, and, and I, I was able to get the job. Um, for those of you that haven't heard about Spaceport Cornwall, um, we are going to be launching the first satellite and first rocket um, from um, from the UK uh, into space, and that, that's hopefully going to be happening in the next couple of weeks. Um, we're looking at a window before Christmas um, that there's looking uh, more likely. There's, there's a couple of things that have got to fall into place, um, and then hopefully will be launching before Christmas. And that, that's not just going to be the first launch in, uh, from the UK, it's actually going to be the first launch from Western Europe. So massive for the UK to have this capability and, and you know, absolutely huge for this to be happening in Cornwall um, and for the opportunities that that's going to bring in the future. Most of you, when you think about launch, you probably have that picture in your head about that traditional um, vertical launch rocket facing straight upwards. We're actually going to be using uh, working with Virgin Orbit um, and Virgin Orbit are a horizontal launch partner. Um, so they use a Boeing 747, you can see Cosmic Girl in the back of that picture there. Um, and then on Cosmic Girl they've got a 70 foot rocket, Launcher 1 rocket, that they attach to the wing of the plane. They fly that plane up to about 35,000 feet before dropping the rocket and then the rocket's a, a, got a two-stage engine um, uh, that will then power off into space and deploy the satellites, the payloads, um, into orbit. Um, so quite a new novel way. Um, this uh, was going to be a video but I've just taken some screenshots of it. This was um, Virgin Orbit's first ever launch um, which they did in January um, 17th 2021 uh, and it was when this took place that I think everybody started to believe that the UK would have its own launch sort of coming soon. Um, so this is what it looks like when it takes off there. You can see the launch of one rocket um, under the wing of, of Cosmic Girl um, flies up to about 35,000 feet and that's when it drops that rocket. The rocket has a five second drop time before the uh, before it ignites and then starts to power into space. And this is what it looks like when it gets into space. Um, you know, the whole most of the rocket has fallen away and this is the dis dispenser where the satellites um, are loaded and they're spring loaded and they will spring up the spring load out into orbit um, to, to, to be in the space they need to be in. Um, so yeah, huge, hugely exciting um, for the county. So this is where we're based um, at Cornwall Airport Newquay and Cornwall Airport Newquay was chosen because it's got one of the longest runways in the UK. It's got a fairly uncongested airspace, so, so it's not a busy airspace above it, and it's got almost direct access over the sea. And that, that's particularly important when it comes to launching rockets safely, because the sea is a safe zone when it comes to when it comes to launching rockets. This is what we have now. So we um, this is when Cosmic Girl, Girl came into land um, about a month ago, which was super exciting, seeing sort of eight years of work finally come to fruition with, with Cosmic Girl coming into land. Um, so we've got a satellite integration facility that you can see behind her there, that big white building. And within that, that's where the satellites will get loaded into the rocket. So the rocket goes in one side um, and then the satellites come in the other and both um, the nose cone of that rocket and the payloads, the satellites come into our nine metre clean room. 
Um, and here you can see a couple of the payloads, a couple of the satellites. So again, when, when, when I talk about launch, I think people quite often think about that vertical takeoff. When we talk about satellites, I think, you know, you picture something the size of a washing machine or, or a car or a minibus, but satellites now can be, as, as you know, can fit in the size of your hand. And that's because technology has become so much more advanced and so much smaller that you can now fit um, a lot of the sensors and a lot of the uh, equipment that the satellites need into something almost shoebox size. So we're, we're launching eight shoebox size satellites um, on our first launch um, and, and two of these satellites are here. Um, I think, you know, when you think back to the first computers and how large they were and the first mobile phones and how big they were, you can really see how technology has got smaller and smaller and smaller. And they say that, you know, every two years, technology halves in size and um, but doubles in in capability and, and i think that is the case and we'll continue to see that um keep getting smaller and the benefit of that is the way to able to launch these things more cheaply because they don't weigh as much as they used to so why is all of this happening you may have seen um, on the news recently about lots of different launches whether that's spacex or rocket labs or virgin orbit uh, in the us and the reason for this is because space is changing we're moving away from a governmental-led space sector to a commercial-led space sector. Um, so this is a graph of all of the launches um, that we've seen over time, from the first launch of Sputnik in 1957 through to 2018. And you can see everything above that, that, that line in the middle um, is governmental launch. Everything be below that line is commercial launch. And you can see that commercial launch is starting to catch up and is now outstripped governmental launch and I think we're going to continue to see that picture and we'll continue to see governments actually paying commercial companies to launch their satellites and the reason for this is because commercial companies can be more agile they can move more quickly they can take slightly more risk and be a bit more innovative um, and I think we'll continue to see that going um, going on in the future this is the picture in the UK um, so about eight years ago the government asked for different sites across the UK um, about who would be interested in potentially becoming a launch site. We currently manufacture a large proportion of the world's small satellites in the UK, but we currently ship them all abroad to launch. So having this launch capability is really another massive piece of the puzzle for, for the UK space capabilities. So you can see the seven launch sites, seven proposed launch sites on, on this map. Um, you've got us down in Cornwall, down in the Southwest there, um, we're, we're definitely closest to launch, um, I would say, but closely followed behind us are um, Shetland and Sutherland, both based up in Scotland, and they are that traditional vertical launch. Um, and I would say they're probably uh, back end of next year or, or uh, maybe into sort of 2020, early 2024 to be able to get those launches off. So it's great for the UK to have that capability of having multiple launch sites here. The reason all of this is happening is because demand for satellite data is growing. Whether you're looking at tracking, monitoring or observing, if, you, if we're thinking about things like smart cities, renewable energies, autonomous vehicles, all of these things require more and more satellite data to be used to feed into them, to help with their efficiencies and to make them work. Some sort of more random and some newer examples of how satellites are being used to, to help us down here on Earth. Um, are here. I'll go through a couple. Um, on the top there, you've got a precision farming application. So you're now able to get satellites that take detailed images of our, of our Earth and our planet. And I think this is the area that really excites me is, is the applications of, of satellites and how they can be used, because I think we've only touched the surface of, of, of how they can be used to benefit us. Um, but in regards to precision farming applications, this is looking at taking detailed images of, of a farmer's fields, um, and then indicating to that farmer which areas of those fields may need a bit of focus. So may, may need a bit more pesticides, may need a bit more fertilizer, but rather than using pesticides and fertilizer on that entire farm area, they're now able to see which specific areas may need it. Um, and that saves time, it increases yield, it reduces co cost, um, and, and is overall really beneficial for the farmer. If you're looking at things like fishing and transportation of goods using boats, all boats over a certain size now need to have a tracker on them. Um, and that can really help with things like illegal fishing. Um, also in regards to the moving of, of goods, there's some thought that we may be able to use the wake 
um, on the side of a boat, so the water that runs up the side of a boat to indicate how heavy those boats are uh, in the way that they're sitting in the water and whether or not they're carrying the goods that they're saying they're carrying. And that can help with things like um, illegal trafficking of humans, um, drug smuggling, um, and, and things like that to make sure people are actually carrying what they're saying they're carrying. Some of the satellites on our first launch, um, one is from a company called Spaceforge. Um, they're a Cardiff-based um, company. They're looking at something um, called in-orbit manufacture. So actually 3D printing things in space to be able to bring back down to Earth um, and they're so much easier to make in space. So initially looking at semiconductors, so, so the things that go into our chips um, within computers, um, and these are much more easy to make in space because of the lack of gravity, because of the incredibly keen, clean conditions of space, and because of the extreme temperatures that that satellite can have, whether it's pointing towards the sun or facing away from the sun. So their initial mission is to, to, to go up um, and then they're going to be trying to send um, their satellite back down. They've got a new technology that they think they're going to be able to bring things back down through the Earth's atmosphere without it burning up. This mission, they're actually going to send it up and purposefully burn it up in the atmosphere. Um, so put it on a bit more of a shallow gradient so it does burn up so they can really test um, their patent and see if that, that will work in regards to getting things back um, successfully. But really exciting company, well worth following if you are on um, social media or on, or on LinkedIn. Um, another company is looking at um, pirating off of Somalia. So they currently currently use sat phones or satellite phones to, to communicate um, in Somalia in regards to pirating. So they're looking to, to use those sat phone signals to be able to indicate to authorities what's happening and to be able to crack down on pirating in that area. So um, I think all of the eight satellites are going to be released on our website. So if anybody's interested, take a look. Um, so what is the opportunity for you? Jacob did a really great presentation about the range of jobs now and some of the jobs that could be there in the future. Um, I'll talk a bit about jobs now and it's not just this, you know, when I speak to a lot of students, they, they, their ambition is to be an astronaut and that's fantastic. If your ambition is to be an astronaut, keep working towards that ambition, but also be aware of the myriad of opportunities and, and great opportunities that are available to you in the space sector as well. Um, there's an expectation that we're going to need another 32,000 small satellites in orbit by 2030. And if that happens, we're going to need more people in regards to spaceport operations so managing and, and, and helping on the ground in regards to, to the spaceports that have been developed. Um, space plane and rocket systems, so looking at how we get those um, rockets up into space. Payload integration, so they're the people that will be handling those satellites and integrating them into the rocket, integrating that rocket or that nose cone onto the main body of the rocket. Propulsion systems. So if you're if you're interested in maths and science, this could be a really sort of appropriate one for you. So that's looking at um, how much fuel and what type of fuel is needed to get things up into space. You don't want too much fuel because then you'll need more fuel to carry that fuel. You definitely don't want too little fuel because if you have too little, that rocket may never make it up there. Um, so really important job and, and, and really fascinating. And I think uh, a really fascinating area in regards to looking at what fuels fuels we may be able to use in the future, what greener fuels can be used. And there's a lot of work that's going into that now. Aerospace engineers, you know, engineers are in short supply in many different sectors across the across the country, no different in the in the space sector. And these are the people that will pull things apart, build things, think creative, creatively about um, new solutions to challenges. So they might be building the satellites, building the rockets, or they might be coming up with a new way of, of, of designing a satellite that could fit in a in a vacant space within within a rocket because you know space really is at a premium in 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 regards to to when you launch um, satellites into space and then if we are launching 32,000 more satellites into orbit by 2030 we're going to be having all of this data coming back down to earth how do we turn that data into something that's usable by your fishermen your farmers us your general public um, on, on your phones and that's where downstream application developers would, would really come in if you're interested in sort of coding your technology your IT um, you know I think that's where a lot of the next millionaires are going to be made because if you can create something that is applicable for a, a, a small local population 
you can scale that across the world very very quickly and very easily if you make something that, that works and and saves time and makes things more efficient just thought I'd touch on to Roots because um, you know you guys are the age that you are now. Um, I think Roots are really important to start to consider. Um, so there are some apprenticeships that are starting in, in the sector. So um, the first space engineering technician apprenticeship has, has um, started in Leicester. We've also got um, it starting in Cornwall this uh, this this year, um, and there are more apprenticeships that are starting to crop up in the sector. However, you, um, university is still a very common route into the sector um, in. 2019 2020 i think 62 percent of the jobs in the sector required a degree level qualification so ucas um which you can see on the other side of this page that is um that's where all university um courses are advertised and there's 37,000 unique university courses that you can study at, at university so if you think at school you might be able to choose between you know, about 20 different subjects at college. You might be lucky enough to choose between 100 to 200 different subjects. At university, there's 37,000 unique courses. So if there's one element of one subject that you're particularly passionate about, there's a strong likelihood that you'll be able to find an appropriate university course to go on to study and then, and then find a job out of the back of that afterwards. I thought I'd touch on some, some of the university um, courses that are quite applicable for the space sector. So aerospace engineering, that's carried out all, all across the UK. Um, have a look at them. Um, some are three years, some are four years, some are five years. Some are integrated masters. Some have a year out in industry. And it's really important just to get an idea of what you're really looking for and what you want. Also look at uh, how they assess you. Some will be more exam based, some will be more hands on based. And that's, again, something for you to think about in regards to where your skill set lies and where you think you can get the best grades um, out, out of the back of that. Um, space science and robotics. So that's robotics here on Earth, but it's also robotics in space. So, you know, it's it's looking likely that we're going to have um, a sort of work base on the moon um, within the next decade. And for that, we're going to need robots to be able to build the things that are up there. Um, and for that, we need people who are skilled in that robotic side. So that's a that's a really interesting, exciting area, I think. Um, and then also on the downstream side, um, if you're interested in that sort of coding tech side, web and mobile app development would be sort of particularly pertinent to, to study, to, to be able to learn those skills that are required. But then also, again, have a look at the courses and see if they do um, use any satellite data in any of the modules um, within those courses, because if that is something that interests you, it'd be great to be able to, to link that into a module whilst you're, whilst you're at university. Jacob already highlighted it um, and, and it's a really great website. Take a look at the spacecareers.uk website. I always say to students, if you're not sure what you want to do, have a look on Space Careers website. Find a job that you think, yeah, actually, that would be, that'd be brilliant. And then work backwards to where you are now. Work out what skills, what experience, what qualifications are needed to get that job in the future. And that can just help give you a little bit of shape to work towards. Um, at, and it's highly likely that you'll go on to study further or, you, or you'll go through a bit of time and you'll actually find something that's a, a, that excites you a bit more and you'll step away from that job. But that job can really help guide you towards, um, towards the route that you may want to go, go down. These are a few things that we have coming up um, over, the, over the next few months. Um, we've got a schools launch broadcast, which is hosted by Tim Peake. Um, that's going to go out either a couple of days after launch or um, if launch is later than, than schools break up, then uh, in January. Um, so that's been written for a school age audience. Um, if you're interested in that, just search for Learn Live um, Countdown to Launch Tim Peake on Google and that will come up and share that with your school. We've got about 50,000 students signed up to watch that or, or interested in watching that so far. Um, we've got a virtual reality experience that's been developed. Um, so you can actually experience first launch. We placed on the Spaceport site. You'll get to hear from speakers, including Tim Peake, our head of Spaceport, Melissa Thorpe, um, some of the satellite manufacturers, some of the rocket engineers, and then you will get to sit in the plane next to the real pilot and hear from the real pilot about what he does. Um, and then you'll get to launch that rocket, push the red button, launch the rocket, and then you'll be able to see a piece of satellite data go from the ground 
up to a satellite and then down to Gunhilly Earth Station, explore the Earth Station, hearing from some of their engineers, and then on you'll follow that piece of data onto a, a researcher who's standing on the ocean floor bed talking about how they use that satellite data. So if you've got a virtual reality experience headset, then you can download that for free. Um, it should be released sometime around launch, um, so just something to be aware of. And then next year, we're going to be launching a satellite called Kernosat-1. Um, and that's going to be monitoring the ocean health um, around Cornwall, but the data from Kernosat-1 is going to be open source data, um, and we want to be working with schools and colleges and uh, educators in being able to use that data from Kernosat to link into to some of their curriculum. Um, so hopefully something you guys may be interested in if you did go on to university, um, you could even look to use some of that within some of your work um, at university as well. I think this is the last slide for me. Just a few recommendations for you guys at the age that you are now. Take a look at the spacecareers.uk website, as I mentioned. Um, if you are looking to go on to university, set a Google alert or something um, for space placements in industry. Um, UK Space Agency space placements in industry is where students will get the opportunity to <coughs> students will get the opportunity to work with businesses over their summer holidays they'll get paid about three thousand pounds to work with those businesses for eight weeks and get some fantastic experience we've um we've had two um spin turns they're called each year and we've actually kept one of our spin turns on this year um after she finished her study um and it's just a great way to get into that industry super competitive we had about 50 applications for one placement um so make your applications really appropriate but try and stay on top of when they get released because some of the placements you can get put on are absolutely incredible um also engage you know if you're on linkedin connect with J jacob connect with myself connect with the speakers that you hear from in the space sector uh, if you're not on linkedin just follow different um, space organizations and space people um within or on your social media channels you'll be amazed how that sort of drip feed of information really helps increase your knowledge and um and your ability to to understand what's what's going on um if you're into i saw that the the highest um the the people were most interested in sort of space exploration side of things you know follow the james webb space telescope um, and follow information about the artemis missions as well um because that's a that's something that's really really massive in our lifetime i feel like it's a whole new space age at the moment and, and you guys are just the right age to be taking advantage of it um new business you know the, the space sector is growing and it's growing much quicker than a lot of other sectors we need new businesses to be coming coming out and to to, to take up some of the slack that we have um, so if you are entrepreneurial look at that side of things there's incubators and there's a lot of support for new businesses in the industry and then competitions and challenges take part in competitions and challenges that you see whether that's from uk seds and if you don't follow uk seds follow uk seds uk seds um, and see some of the competitions they have the uk space agency competitions um, there's loads of different space competitions that you can take part in and enter and they look that extracurricular stuff looks amazing on your cv whether you're applying to university or whether you're trying to get a job in the future and you never know where it'll take you we ran a competition recently for a young launch crew to follow us um, to, towards launch and uh, we had six winners who are following us to launch we ended up taking them up to london um, to see the buzz lightyear premiere and then interview the buzz lightyear cast afterwards um, so tim peak uh, chris evans and Ta uh, taika waititi um, and that all came from a competition that we ran locally um, and now they're all going to get to come to come to first launch as well and here they are um, interviewing the the light year year crew and i think one of them is on this um call as well um that's it from me uh feel free to connect on on social media uh, connect on linkedin um, if you've got any more questions i look forward to answering them um, after the next session <laughs>